Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today, let's talk about studio monitors. And specifically, I wanna give you three tips for choosing a pair of studio monitors if you're in the market. And before we jump in, if you have any kind of questions related to gear recommendations, because I get asked a ton, Graham, what specific gear do you recommend? Grab my studio gear guide. There's the link right here on the screen and it's in the description box below. I've got recommendations on every kind of gear, microphones, monitors, headphones, DAWs, interfaces, including whole uh, packages of home studios that you could put together at different price points. And every recommendation for even the mics and the monitors and everything is at different price points as well. I don't make any money off of these. These are not affiliate links, they're just literally, I put together my favorite recommendations. You can buy them wherever you want, but the links are in the studio gear guide. At least you'll know what I would recommend at different budgets and different price points. So grab your copy of the gear guide updated every year at studiogearguide.com. Now let's talk about how to pick studio monitors. And again, I got three tips for you. If you are in the market for your first pair, let's say you're working on headphones right now, that's fine. You can totally work exclusively on headphones. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're at a point where you're like, I would like to have a second set of speakers. I got my headphones and then I want a pair of monitors. I think that's a natural evolution. You should get a pair eventually when you can afford them. But there's a lot of hype out there. There's a lot of myths out there, a lot of bad information. And so let me just break it down for you and make it simple. So tip number one, choose monitors that fit your room. Now, the, the idea is out there that the bigger the speaker, the better. You should get the biggest monitor you can afford because the bigger the cone, you get bigger bass response. So it's gonna be a little more accurate bass response. And while that is technically true about the bass response, I say forget all that. Size of speaker is irrelevant. You shouldn't just give flat advice to say everyone should get the biggest monitor they can afford. That's, that's crazy. Depending on the size of your room, you might be better suited to a smaller speaker with maybe say a five inch cone. So a lot of near field monitors, traditional monitors that you'd have on your desk right in front of you are eight inch speakers, okay? It's a really common size, but you know what? A lot of us are in really tiny rooms. And I have worked in a bunch of different studios, both big and small, and then I've had a bunch of different home studios over the years, and I've owned a ton of different monitors, and I've worked twice with eight inch speakers, uh, both from good brands, good speakers, but I felt that the speakers were too big, put out too much sound, and it was a little overwhelming for my size of room. As I've gone to smaller rooms, and this room right here is relatively small, it's, a, it's in my garage, I have a three car garage, and I've taken one third of it, walled it off, and we built out a studio years ago. And so it's a giant rectangle, but it's not very giant, it's just a little rectangle, I should say. And so my speakers are right behind me, I don't use eight inch speakers. Those guys in this video are six inch speakers and I've worked exclusively on five inch and six inch speakers for the better part of five, six, seven years now. And it's because they put out a manageable amount of sound for me and response and, and it fits my room. Now, I think this is critical. I, you can get whatever you want, but you're gonna be best suited by having a size of speaker that fits your room. If you have a bigger room that's wider, more space, and you feel like you can handle the sound output from an eight inch speaker, then get an eight inch speaker. But if you're like me, you're in a smaller room, there's nothing wrong with a five inch speaker. My friend Jakir King, again, Grammy award winning mix engineer, he mixed Kings of Leon on five inch KRK rockets, okay? It's a great size speaker for the home studio because it puts out a really decent range of frequency response that's helpful, that's useful, that gets you a good feel for what's happening in your music. So don't buy the biggest speaker you can afford, buy the right size for your room. Tip number two, buy studio monitors that fit your budget. Should be obvious, but there again, there are myths out there that you need to buy $1,000 speakers, $2,000 speakers. You see a lot of high-end brands in nice studios and you think, well, that's what they're using, I should use it. It's the same concept with microphones or audio interfaces. You are living in the best time to be a music maker right now. If you're watching this video, then you have a plethora of choices out there with your studio monitors, and they're all amazing. There's so many companies out there making really good sounding speakers at rock bottom prices. So I say, figure out how much money you feel like you can spend. If you can spend $700 for a pair, great. Go find a pair of speakers at that price point. If you can only spend $300 for a pair, great. 
go do that. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, download my gear guide and look at what your budget is. I've got recommendations for each budget range when it comes to speakers. But the key here is, is to go off of what you can afford to spend, not the other way around. This should be a good rule of thumb for all of life, but it's especially true when it comes to speakers because I don't believe personally that you gain much of anything the more you spend on a speaker. So much of how we make mixing and recording decisions is influenced not just by our speaker, but by the room that we're in. So you could spend a million dollars on the perfect speakers, but if you bring them into your basement or your bedroom, guess what? They'll probably sound like crap because your room sounds like crap. My room kind of sounds like crap. It's gotten better. I've got acoustic treatment and created a mixing sweet spot where my head is, but it's still not perfect. There are still nuances to the room. Every studio you're in has nuances to it that affect what you hear coming out of the speakers. The speaker alone isn't gonna determine how good of a sound it is. It's the speaker plus your room, plus how you've set up your room and positioned the speakers in your room. So at the end of the day, you gotta get a pair of speakers that you can afford and work with what you can afford. Again, if Grammy award-winning Jakir King can mix a Grammy hit on $300 speakers, aka the KRK Rocket Fives, so can you. And that relates to my third and final tip with buying studio monitors. Choose a pair and don't look back. At the end of the day, your studio monitors are just one of many decisions in your home studio purchasing. And they're only one of many points of failure or success in your studio. We already talked about this a little bit, but the quality of your microphones, the quality of your interface, the quality of your preamps, the quality of your conversion, the quality of your uh, plug-in usage, the quality of your room, the quality of your headphones and speakers, the, the quality of your song and the arrangement and your talent as an artist and musician and your performance. I mean, there's so many elements to what makes a really killer final recording. Your monitors are just one part of that. There is a school of thought out there, and I know because some of my friends live in the school of thought, and I love them dearly, but I just disagree with them and they disagree with me, and that's fine. We can still hang out and have a beer, but there's a school of thought out there that your studio monitors are the most important element of your home studio because everything comes out of them and they affect everything you hear, and so then every decision you make is colored, for better or worse, by those speakers. And while I understand the sentiment behind that, I disagree entirely. And the reason I disagree entirely is because not only are the speakers, like I said, just one of many parts of the equation, you will never hear your music perfectly, ever. Because every pair of speakers as different has its own frequency response. And guess what, like I said, every room is different and that colors your experience. And you will never have a perfect room. Some of the best studios I've been in aren't perfect. They all have their weirdisms. I'm sure some are better than others, but even if, even if you were in a perfect room with perfect monitors, guess what? None of your fans are gonna listen to your music in your room on your speakers. No, they're just not. Which means we should care less about how our mix sounds here in our room coming out of our speakers and more about how it sounds out there in the real world. And while Having good monitoring and a good mixing sweet spot can help you make better decisions. It's still gonna be flawed and you still have to know how does this translate out into the real world. And all of us, all of us can adapt our ears to what our room's giving us, what our speakers are giving us. And if you reference, if you reference professional mixes, you can mix on any speaker in any room because it tells you what a good mix should sound like on those speakers in those rooms. And that's a pro tip for you. So don't buy into the hype that you have to get the best speakers in the world. Look at what fits your room, look at what fits your budget, buy a pair and don't look back. Don't spend forever reading reviews. Just, just make a decision and move on because it's not gonna make that big of a difference to your music. Getting better at songwriting, getting better at recording, better at mic placement, better at arranging, all those things, mixing better, all that will make a bigger difference than which monitors you choose. But again, if you get stuck and you're still not sure even where to begin because there's so many brands and you care about my opinion, which maybe you do if you're watching my videos, and since many of you asked me for these studio gear guides and I said no for so many years and finally put one together, I want you to have my gear guide of my personal recommendations. Just go to studiogearguide.com. Again, it's a free PDF. I update it every year. And what it's gonna give you is 
recommendations at different price points for microphones, audio interfaces, studio monitors, headphones, DAWs, and then even sort of whole studio packages. Like if I had to start over, I had no gear, and I had only this amount of money to spend, these are the five or six things I would buy. If I had a little bit more money to spend, here's what I'd buy. And I've got links there to Sweetwater because that's where I buy all my gear from, but you don't have to use those links. You can just see what I recommend and go buy it wherever you like to buy music. It's completely up to you, but I think maybe it'll help you if you're stuck and don't know where to start. Helpful resource, free guide, just download it and enjoy. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and liking this video. It means a lot to me. Hope you're having a great day, making some great music, and I'll see you in another video real soon.